want you to know that this man has a smile that lights up a television screen from here to Bangor, Maine. His name is Magic Johnson, and Magic, it's a delight to have you aboard in the NBA. Young fella, young fella, show them your talent, young fella, show them your talent. And Owen will make it down the flag of the rim. Oh, wow, what a play. Wow. I, Shaquille O'Neal, after careful deliberation, have decided to forego my senior eligibility. I am ready to take what I've learned on with me to the NBA. Oh, Smith. Oh, my goodness. That was sick, wicked, and nasty. Here's Joe Wallace trying to get from the right. He hangs baseline. Shot no good, but off the floor with a follow dunk with two hands. Here I come, world. Here I come. I'm going to conduct the draft in this after I announce you, okay? All right. I mean, if anybody can do it, you can. All right. Okay. You know, what are you laughing at? You know? Yo, dog. <laughs> You've reached the NBA. It's a dream come true. But it's also just the beginning. Rookies are chasing fame, fortune, and NBA glory while trying to figure out a whole new way of life. And they're being tested right away, both on and off the court. Y'all ain't got one play right yet. You and you, y'all mess up every play. Every one of them. It's hard at the beginning, you know, you gotta get adjusted to everything, you know, just the lifestyle of traveling all the time and, and playing all the time. You know, if you come from Europe or from college, you play like maybe once a week and mix in the NBA, you're always on the run, you're always playing, it feels like and no breaks. Rook, don't you just getting lost a little bit, okay? Sippy, just getting lost a little bit. Swing, one more. Did you see what he just put me through? Yeah. <laughs> but you really ring it, huh? And they expect us to practice later on. <laughs> it's gonna pay off in the long run. Whether they've got a big name or a lesser amount of fame, all these young ballers have to endure rookie hazing, a tradition that can get downright embarrassing. Veterans haze the rookies that think they're good when they're really not that good. See, everybody was good in high school and college, but when you come to this level, it's like starting off. See, this guy right here, I can control this guy. Look, we get it. Give me a Gatorade, baby. Bring me a Gatorade back. I got you. Oh, get it from the back of the fridge. One that comes in and thinks he's, you know, the answer, you know, to to all our prayers and thinks he's gonna have us win the championship and nobody's better than him, then you know, we might have to slow his roll a little bit. Uh I had a rookie job, I had to bring donuts to every shoot around game, uh, you know, at home I had to bring donuts. I'm Chris McCray. Well donkey no, donkey donuts. Yeah, donuts, man. <laughs> I remember going to get coffee on a cold day in Seattle, raining. Unloading planes in cold cities, take out the bags off the planes, you know, it's 20 degree weather outside. I already know we eat donuts, but, you know, they taste the same way. <laughs> Definitely was fun, but at the same time, it was a rookie transition thing. Yeah, a little irritating sometimes. Yeah, very. And no matter what the rookies do to try to escape from getting hazed, it just never seems to work. Brooks got to go get us food for the plane. They know they do this. I got to do what? I'm going to put the order in. What order? I'm going to put the order for everybody to eat food on the plane. You got to pick it up. Hey, hey Coach Matt, got to define the rookies. Nah, man. What do you mean? Nah, you have to. It's no veterans ask you to sing or go get them a, p a paper or some donuts or whatever, you're supposed to go do that. He's a rookie here. We gotta give it to people if I do the He gets treatment like this. I mean, that's just all about respecting your veterans and respecting the game. I mean, so many other guys who probably back in the day got taped up and got beat up. Today's rookies have it easy. Pampered, spoiled athletes. S-H-A-Q-I-E-M-O-U-S-E. 
you just have to uh, respect the game and respect what everybody else has done. And I wanted to, wanted to do what all the other greats before me have done, so I didn't mind going through the ritual. But once I got the status of the man, the hazing quickly stopped. They might get humbled in the locker room, but that's all behind them once they hit the court. Time to get down. And for NBA rookies, that first season is one they'll never forget. Kind of tough on us. We didn't get our names up there. We get Gucci Sexton. That's all right, bro. Next year, we did all that. Right. I'm a rookie. I play a rookie role. I mean, it's, it's no big deal. There you go, bro. There you go, bro. My man. A rookie season, I was just thrown into the whirlwind of the NBA and, you know, being able to finally feel like you've You've made it. You've made it to the NBA. You you realize a dream. Um, you know, not being satisfied, but just being really proud and, and, and grateful for the opportunity. And it was definitely one of my most, if not my most memorable season. Coming up, we'll look back at last year's trio of rookie stars and then meet the new generation, the class of 2004. The night the NBA's newest stars hit the spotlight, draft night. And what happens in these few hours will affect their lives for years to come. Where they're taken and who takes them can make a difference between a career of big contracts and commercials or getting buried on the bench. Headlining the 2003 draft were two of the most hyped rookies to enter the league in quite some time. High school phenom LeBron James and Carmelo Anthony, who led Syracuse to a championship as a freshman. It's like Frazier and Ali. Melo and the King. LeBron James, look out. Take it off and touch it down. Flight number 23. Here he comes the other way. There's your first James Jam of his career. Giving it up to Andre Miller out there. LeBron and Carmelo lived up to all the hype, but they wouldn't be alone. Miami's Dwayne Wade was having a great season under the radar, then raised his game to an even higher level in the playoffs. Maybe game one will be decided right here. Wade puts it up. It's yes. good. Yeah, baby. Game two. Stan Van Gundy went to the rookie and he delivered. Then there was the flip side. Serbia's Darko Milicic, the number two pick, was riding the bench in Detroit and struggled to live up to high expectations. Oh, Milicic flew the stuff. One year later, the names have changed, but the emotions are the same as players get set for draft night 2004. They are college stars, high school stars, international phenoms. They have arrived on the doorstep of the NBA. It's going down tonight. Yes, one time, one time, y'all let him superstar. Superstar. I'm wearing a steel blue double in a stripe. We never had European cut suit. I like it. You know, all the day's work. Your hands and palms are sweating the whole day. Just running through your mind where you're going to end up. Are you getting nervous? I ain't nervous. I'm going to go where I'm going to go. I can't do nothing about that. can't stop that. I'm ready to get this part out of the way. This is the tough part. Anxiety's running high, not just for the players waiting to get drafted, but for executives like those on the Sixers getting ready to make their picks. Well, we're looking as a player that we can add it, and it's going to be here for a long time. It may take them a year or two years to get to develop, and um, if that happens, then we're going to have a good player. We've been concentrating on the top half of the draft because we have the number nine pick. Whether our favorite pick out of that group comes to us, we don't know. We have every angle covered right now. I just have to wait to see how it turns out. The Orlando Magic chose high school star Dwight Howard with the first pick, even though many thought they would take the man who led UConn to the national title, Emeka Okafor. Yeah! Dwight Howard, wow. Wow. With the Magic choosing Howard over Okafor, the expansion Charlotte Bobcats have a chance they weren't expecting, and they wasted no time taking advantage. This person will be the face of the franchise. Oh, yeah, I'm getting nervous, y'all. The NBA's 30th and newest team, the oh, Charlotte damn, Bobcats, select Emeka Okafor from the University of Connecticut. Nice. 
Roger. Yeah, I'm going to have to learn how to like orange. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just very excited. I'm very happy for him that, you know, he finally accomplished his dream. As the draft goes on, 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 this is Washington's pick, but in reality, Dallas's player. What happens that makes it get it crazy is when people start calling on possible throwing trade deals at you, because that's when you have to really think on your feet. All right, let me call you right back. I'm talking to you. Let me call you right back. Do we want to do this? Anything? Or do we like where we are? The guy that we think we won. Maybe there, there's a couple teams that may take them ahead of us, but now I would say there's about a 70 percent chance that we're going to get the guy we won. I'm not getting my hopes up. I'm not getting my hopes up. Every time I get my hopes up, I'm not. don't even don't even get my hopes up. There's been days I thought that, and um, and right before us, uh, the player was taken, and I remember walking out of the room, kicking the wall afterwards because I was so upset. Damn. I'm not getting pick 19. I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. I'm gonna pick 19. It is what it is. Atlanta takes Josh Childress. Oh, jeez. For the Sixers, who have the ninth pick, things are starting to break their way. And now their time has arrived. Philadelphia is on the clock. Seriously, I'm sure we'd like to get it. They have a chance to take a Philly native, St. Joseph star Jameer Nelson. But it turns out the 76ers have another player in mind. And they're ready to let everyone know about it. Andre Iguodala, just a freak of an athlete. He reminds you a little bit of Scotty Pippen. My hand was shaking. At the seventh pick, I was like, man, my dream coming true. I'm gonna get picked in second round. Oh, no, this. <laughs> <laughs> you had a dream that you go get picked in second round? Yeah, like I was just sitting there. <laughs> oh, nervous as hell. I think this was one of the first times where a guy we really wanted, we targeted, and uh, he was there for us, and we were able to get him. We got the guy we rated fourth yeah. you know, in the draft. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's almost one where I'm uh, going to go home and wake up and have to read the papers and make sure that we did get him. Meanwhile, college player of the year, Jameer Nelson, can only wait for his name to be called, while players with lesser-known names are still being taken ahead of him. With the 18th pick, the New Orleans Hornets select J.R. Smith from St. Benedict's Prep. Finally, Nelson is drafted by Denver with the 20th pick. But soon he'll be getting a quick detour from Denver. The news wasn't surprising, but finding out from a fan sure was. What you mean? I got traded? Huh? I got traded? You know, I knew I was going to get picked. It just was a matter of where. And, and I'm just glad that the team that picked me, you know, wanted me. Well, actually, <laughs> the team that made the trade for me wants me. <laughs> I ain't, you know, I got traded. You got a mic on. Yeah, to yeah, yeah, Orlando. <laughs> when the dust settles, Jameer has joined Dwight Howard in Orlando. They'll try to turn around the team with the league's worst record. Meanwhile, Emeka Okafor is expected to be the man in Charlotte. The Bobcats think they have just the man for the job, a combination of ability, maturity, and personality. I'm all about being a complete person. I like being like a well-rounded individual. This is the way I was raised. I'm making a, being a number two pick uh, alleviate any of the pressure as opposed to being number one. You know, if, if anything, this is even more pressure. You're the first pick of a, you know, of a, of a, of a franchise. So uh, <laughs> there we go, right? As you guys see, we have a nice little flowery orange, white, and some shade of blue. It's almost husky blue a little bit, a little nostalgia for me. So must be a good sign. Bobcat blue. There we go. Dallas had drafted Devin Harris, a player ready to step right into his role as an NBA point guard, even if he didn't look like one. Maybe I look like a, just a normal individual just walking down the street. I don't even know what the typical NBA player would be. I mean, you've got so many different personalities, so many different type of people. I mean, I don't, who's to say what a typical player would be? <laughs> For Philadelphia's Andre Iguodala, Reaching the NBA meant living a dream he had shared with his older brother, Frank. They grew up playing the game together back in the day. We competed at everything. I mean, whenever he did something, I wanted to do it better. And it was the same the other way around. Drafted out of high school by the Hornets, 18-year-old J.R. Smith brings a mix of teenage innocence and brash confidence. Why not just go pro? You 
you got to get paid, they're having fun, they're doing what they love, why not? Why can't I do it? As long as I'm a great person and people know I'm a great person, that's all I need. Mean. If you're a great person, money will come. Fame and glory will come. Coming up next, Emeka Okafor goes from the NBA draft to the U.S. Olympic team, but finds out it's a tough transition. Can we go over 14 and 15 one more time real quick? 14 and 15, uh... His night at the draft is ending, but for Emeka Okafor, the celebration is just beginning. You can't sleep when you get drafted. It's like against the rule book. You just can't go to sleep. It doesn't make sense to, you know, parties out, celebration, you know, gotta have fun. But while the other rooks sleep in, Emeka pays the price for his late night. He arrives in the private jet of team owner Bob Johnson for a visit to Charlotte. The day after the draft was pretty rough. Was up all night celebrating. I had to make it for an early morning plane. I somehow managed to stumble off the plane and I was so tired and it's like a blur. <laughs> Before the day gets started, he meets the man who foots the bills. I try to see him as, as alert as possible. <laughs> you know, I'm shaking his hand and uh, just try to uh, I don't know, just make a good first impression. That's how we're saying welcome. Welcome to your new home. Right, you want to be signed? Yeah, that's cool. Let's get that first one. Well, we would like to, you know, relax a little bit, kind of soak up the city a little bit, but I uh, was whisked away in, a, in, in the car and had to do 50 a billion appearances all at once. In 10 minutes or less, because I sure can't pronounce it, what is your full first name? Yeah, we got to go do a TV thing. We'll be coming out shortly, guys. When you finally did hear your name and you realized it was going to be with Charlotte, kind of take us through, you know, mentally what you went through. Oh, oh excuse me. It's been a crazy couple 24 hours, hasn't it, though? Yeah, it's been nice, though. It's been yeah. crazy. Uh, well, what's it been like, like, 24 hours? Uh... A lot of you guys. <laughs> Most rookies can ease into their new role, but Emeka takes center stage right from day one. He's introduced to the Bobcat staff as the face of the new franchise. I will tell you, this is a whirlwind day for him. Hasn't had much sleep, so we're going to give him a quick tour of this, but I wanted all of you to have a chance to meet him. You will meet him over time. He's with us for a while. We're keeping this guy. Over <laughs> Once again, thank you for the... Um, you know, warm welcome in. Have some fun. So is this place all decorated like this? One? After the draft, the Bobcats move Emeka into his new apartment in Charlotte. It's a long way from campus life. Yeah. Just had to come in with my toothbrush. <laughs> For my first place, I just wanted to get something real nice, just kind of treat myself to something, and just wanted to be somewhere where I knew I'd have a lot of good memories and just step up from a dorm room. This fish right here tends to be everybody's favorite. Just just looks kind of quirky, doesn't it? <laughs> Has all those little fins going in whichever way direction. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Life's too good right now for it to really, I don't know, everything's going along so smoothly. Kind of, I think I'm like, you guys ever seen that movie Vanilla Sky? Am I familiar with that movie? Are you familiar? All right. There was a point where it's like Tom Cruise is playing this guy, right? And, you know, all of a sudden everything just starts to go just gray for him, all right? He starts to go gray for him. And at the end of the movie, it turns out he's like in a dream world. <laughs> so sometimes I think that, that could be me. And I'm hoping I won't, I won't ever wake up out of it, you know what I'm saying? Just things are just going so, so perfectly, just, I don't know, eer eerily perfect almost. And Mecca's magical ride isn't over yet. He's about to go from the national title to the national team, joining the cast of stars who will play for the U.S. in the Olympics. The sacrifices you guys made to be here, I think you all want to get better. You all want to win. You all want to accomplish something. So that's it. USA on three. Ready? One, two, three. USA. USA. Stop close. Stop close. Stop close. Stop close. The only player with no NBA experience, Emeka begins his trial by fire on a team with little time to prepare. How long has Serbia been practicing? Let's go. Come on, Charlie. Hold up. Hold up. Three weeks. Before that, we went to the mountains to run for another week. And we can't get you guys to listen up here. Come on. Let's go now. Let's go. 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 Let's
The heat is on the U.S. team to prove it's still the world's best. And the practices are intense and demanding under a perfectionist head coach, Larry Brown. Get that one, get that one. Trying to mold these stars into one unit, Brown is driving them hard. And even seasoned NBA vets are getting all they can handle. You definitely shocked the body with that one. It's a good thing, though. That means we're going hard, right? What? Larry Brown don't play, boy. <laughs> Brown is known for being a teacher of the game. And the Mecca is just like a sponge, looking to soak up all the knowledge. The first thing I thought was just, you know, it's going to be a great experience for me to learn the game and and just you know, a nice introduction into the NBA. But after hurting his ankle early in camp, he's starting to fall behind in the learning curve. I got injured right early on, so I wasn't in the mix as far as getting to learn the plays. I kind of, I, I did struggle with learning the plays and, you know, what to do, uh, like, r right away. Do you want that cross screen still? It was 24, yeah. UCLA yeah. cut. Am I going yeah. over the top of him? Yeah. The team's veterans have been picking up the fine points of Brown's offense. But with his injury and his inexperience, Emeka just can't seem to catch up. If you're on the plate, you're not going to be comfortable. You're going to be always second-guessing yourself. So that set me back a little bit. Coach Brown? Coach Brown? Can you help me with some of the players real quick? Yeah. Yeah. You got to catch on quick. You don't catch on quick. Your ass gonna be on the bench. Can't be out there not knowing the plays. I, I, I know rubs in the middle and oh fist is just, just a movement before they gets me. Oh, he gonna have trouble. Big ogre for it. <laughs> Ooh, he gonna have trouble, boy. Your man cannot play out there on that perimeter, boy. If it's not going your way, Start to have the adverse effect and start messing with your game. Like, all right, I'm gonna show these guys. Oh no, I'm not showing them what's going wrong. While the rest of the team is busy getting ready for the Olympics, Emeka is left with the growing feeling of being on the outside. I get him out. He get about a good ten games and nobody ain't gonna know what he's doing. You know what's gonna happen? Steven Catino just gonna put him down there to rebound. They, they, he not in, um, he with the ball cast. Oh, yeah, he is? I thought he was with the other kid. Oh. Oh, I know. Oh, they gonna really struggle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they in trouble. While Emeka's road to the Olympics hasn't been smooth, other rookies have their own challenges to deal with. We'll catch up with J.R. Smith, Dwight Howard, and Jameer Nelson when we come back. It's off to New Orleans for the Hornets' top draft pick, J.R. Smith, and his father, Earl. J.R. jumped to the NBA straight out of high school, and Earl is by his side to help him prepare for his new life in the NBA. This is what we ride, man. <laughs> Don't let nobody say if you're a first round, you get to start off with a truck or nothing. We got a rental car. We're getting ready to go to Men's Warehouse, and J.R. gonna get a couple of, maybe a couple of suits and some pants. So he looked presentable when he goes out to the games and stuff like that. Dress shoes, jeans, and a button-up. They kill him. He's a professional now, so he needs to dress like a professional. You know, it's a time and a place for it, you know, like the jeans and stuff like that. But the type of events and the type of people he's going to be around, he has to dress for success, look the part, be the part. What size pants have been wearing lately? 40. 40. He said I would recommend a 36 waist for you. I just go with the flow, man. Roll around with Pops and Randy. I know they ain't gonna steer me wrong. So, looking real good right now. Whew. Feel like MJ right now. Dude, from what I hear, you is an MJ. <laughs> <laughs> no camera in here. While JR is sprucing up his wardrobe, Jameer Nelson and Dwight Howard are suiting up for the magic. They're heading off to Vegas to begin playing in the NBA Summer League. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to Summer League Basketball. Tonight, the Orlando Magic and the number one overall pick in the draft, Dwight Howard, taking on the Phoenix Suns. Yes, we'll be on TV. 
You're 12 years old, man. You don't need that on. You're 12 year old guy, man. What, what, what 13? 13 years old, man. It's for old guys like me, baby. <laughs> Dwight Howard, I think he's going to be a big-time player. It's going to take a little time. Jameer Nelson is a little bit more seasoned, a little bit more ready to step right in. For Jameer, the college player of the year who waited so long on draft night, now it's a chance to start proving himself. Honestly, coming into this summer league, I want to establish myself, let people know that I'm a serious player. I think it's just giving me a little taste of how the NBA really is, you know, aspect of the athletes, everybody out here in the summer league is athletic. Everybody is quick, fast, strong, everything. And uh, and I see the things I have to work on by playing in the summer league. It's vital. It's vital to, for them to have a grasp of competition, conditioning, plays. Everything is different from what they've experienced. Anytime you're on this block, Dwight, this man is going to try to step in and seal you. Coming in from out of school, a lot of guys would do to me like I would do to somebody just coming into high school. Uh, I'm trying to bully. I had a lot of talks with my coach, and he said that if they're bringing force to you, you got to bring it back. Well, I think everything is, is, is what I expected, you know. And I just told myself uh, summer league would be my transition from high school to the NBA. But while Dwight and Jameer can make the transition together, J.R. Smith is adjusting on his own without the benefit of a summer league. He gets down to work at the Hornets training camp in New Orleans. The first grueling lesson in his NBA education. Come on, J.R. Let me catch it. Hey, Rook, don't let D. Armstrong catch you, Rook. Let me catch you. Don't let him catch you, Rook. He was uh, second to last, I think. Second or third to last. I told him he's too young. Too young to be last. If you ever come in last, you're going to run the rest of the practice. So I uh, just wanted to let him know that, you know, he, at 19 years old, he should almost be out running everybody in this gym. So he has to pick it up a little bit. You know, the, the unfortunate thing about him is he came into a situation where, <laughs> uh, you know, he has a Pat Riley style camp going on. I don't think he's ever worked this hard. And he's not used to working when he's dog tired. Uh, you know, he wants to find his breaks. And, you know, you're out there on the floor, you're tired. You still got to find a way to make that next play. You know, he's very surprised right now, and I'm sure he's hoping it's not going to be like this every day. Ah. No middle, no middle. Still play, running right. Rebound, rebound. Good job, good job. Here we go. Lock him in, Rook. I mean, it's a big step, but I think I'm ready for it. I mean, a lot of guys out there I just learned from and, and watched when I was growing up. Now I'm playing against them. It's, it's going to be a lot different. You heard about the wall? The rookie wall? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I heard it. You heard about it? I go ahead, though. That's what they all say. <laughs> yes, you are. You'll know when you hit it. You're going to be sleeping one day. You're going to say, I can't get up. Who can imagine being in high school coming in this other than people who've done it? So, uh, you know, I think we're going to have a lot of fun. It's optional, right? What? This is this no optional shooting. You got to get all in. Hey, I didn't tell you this, did I? He asked me yesterday if shoot around was, uh, was optional. <laughs> it might have been for him in high school. It might have been. He's like, he's like, well, you don't have to go to shoot around, do you? You go if you want to go. It's like, not that I know of. We can't presuppose anything with that guy. Yeah. I wouldn't even want to begin to figure out what to do with him <laughs> on an NBA level at 18. Uh -uh. A trade on draft day sent Jameer Nelson from Denver to Orlando. But his roots are still planted right in his old stomping grounds, his hometown just outside of Philly. I've worked with Jameer off and on for about three years now. I mean, when he was in St. Joe's, he'd be here in the off season. Well, they have a strength coach down in Orlando that we'll make contact with, just go over his numbers for his bench, uh, agility work. They do their own types of testing down there. So the next summer when he comes back, we work off of what they have and what they need him to do. Explosive power. Basketball, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the way Very specific for the rebounding and jumping elevation. All right. See you next year, man. Do your Thanks. thing. Thanks. Represent. Yeah, where we are? Yep. We'll be waiting for you. We'll see you when you wait.
But he still has time for one more taste of home cooking from his mom, Lynn. Jameer's last meal before he gets to go to Orlando is going to be a big feast. When he was going to the rookie camps, Vegas and all over the summer, I knew he was coming back in a week or two. Now that he's going to be going away a thousand miles from here, I probably get a little depressed about it. But I'm happy for him. I'm very happy. What team is Daddy going to be playing for? Orlando Magic. Down in Orlando, Jameer's teammate Dwight Howard is already settling in, gearing up for the grind of training camp. You know, the people down here are cool. I'm so tired. Some people ask me if I'm a basketball player. I just tell them I play miniature golf or something. They don't know. Make them feel weird for a second. Like, he might play manager golf for real. I'm glad to go through a month or so without people recognizing me as much as doing when the season starts. It's my team. This is my high school team. 840. First one in the gym. Just want to make sure I'm in shape for the season. Now I got to play a lot of games. One, two, three. Get that four right there, up and back. Good. Right there. Low right He's so young, he really hasn't trained that much before. And in the beginning, it, you got to push him to get to that next level. Don't quit. Drive it up. Ah, uh, here you go. Drive it. Lock it. Okay. You never quit when you got more in you. Heels down, and hips high, hips high, hips high. There you go. Now, He's right where we want him to be. He gained 17 pounds. He gained maybe three quarters of a percent fat which is okay because we don't want them so streamlined. We want to have some more mass on them. I got to start running like Jameer. I know if Jameer going to be running the whole game, I'm going to have to run the flow with him. While Dwight and Jameer tackle training camp together in Orlando, another rookie heads off to Dallas. How you doing? Thank you. Devin Harris is beginning his own journey into a new kind of life. Six months ago, I think my moped was broke, so I was walking. But, uh, yeah, just to be blessed, you know, now with the stuff we got nowadays and, and the, the lifestyle I can live, it's just sometimes you got to make sure you appreciate every day when you wake up. And when Devin wakes up these days, it's in his new Dallas home, surrounded by his family members who moved with him for support and guidance. This is where I spend most of my time. This is my little sister, Tanisha. Just came home from college, first time to Dallas. That's my father, Terry. Uh, this is my mother, Julie. Uh, she's one, one of the beautiful parents that I have. Well, we've been here in Dallas now for about a month and a half. Uh, bought our own uh, townhouse over in Addison, and we're adjusting to uh, Dallas life. I get my personality from him, that's what they say. No. My laid back. Your mother. They have their own residence and, and they're doing their own thing, but just to know they're close enough if I need anything or if anything goes down, I know that they're there, but I gotta have my own space as well. It's not like a, a LA or a Chicago, but it's, it's big enough. And it's just a good, a good fit. Right now, I'm gonna work the mind a little bit with the, the psych doc. 44. Take it. While every NBA team has a large staff of coaches, no one has quite as many as the Mavericks. And Devin will have access to personal services from a sports psychologist. I'm not going to teach him anything about how to shoot. I don't talk about those things. I don't talk about conditioning. But what I try to do is have him understand what focusing is and what concentration is. We're locking in, Devin. It's an excellent job. Get on. Okay, now we'll shoot two in a row this time. Shoot. They might include things of goal setting, visualization, relaxation, handling distractions. Tie the game. All right, it's tied. This is for the win. One of the things that I enjoy about him is the calmness that goes with inside of him. Okay, this time all the way through. If I touch it, now I'm back. He doesn't get very anxious out there. He doesn't become very distracted. Well, he helps me out a lot, uh, being a rookie. Um, shooting is like, it's, it's, it's a lot of mental, you know, just making sure the repetitions are there and 
you know, if you're focusing in, you're making shots. If not, you're kind of struggling, and it's kind of there. You know, pushing along, helping along with that. Yeah, that's nothing. Your mind, now your mind's going to start to work. It's how do I get rid of the bad things and keep maximizing the good things? That's what he needs to learn at this particular level. The pressure's on. The pressure will only grow higher and the spotlight brighter for these three talented rookies. The demands of training camp were only the beginning. Now it's time to start playing for real as they look ahead to their first NBA games. Coming up next, we'll meet the rookie who the Sixers wanted all along. Andre Igudala. For a guy being 20 years old, uh, the maturity that he had uh, showed that he was going to be a special player. And we are at the NBA draft with the newest Sixer, Andre Iguodala. Can you say hello to Philadelphia right now? Hey, I don't out there in Philly. Now that he's a 76er, Andre can finally relax after a tense day of waiting at the draft. My brother's back here joking the whole time, and I'm ready to punch him because he's making me nervous. All of his life, Andre has looked up to his older brother, Frank, who was once a big-time athlete in his own right. People don't know that he jumps higher than me. They think I can jump, but, you know, they, they haven't seen him. But now Andre is the one who's on the brink of a pro career as the prize pick of the Sixers. Well, our staff really was high on Andre from the beginning. Just the fact his versatility, I think, you know, look at him getting four triple doubles in college. A lot of players don't do that. The day or two days before the draft, uh, he came in for a private workout unannounced. His agent didn't want anybody to know. Sixers didn't want anybody to know. Well, I didn't think it was a secret at all. So I went in thinking it was a regular workout. And then at the end, it's like, uh, so what about the private workout? I was like, uh, what private workout? You know, I'm thinking it was just a regular workout. More than just a workout, just have a chance to sit and talk to him. Uh, for a guy being 20 years old, uh, the maturity that he had uh, showed that he was going to be a special player. And we ranked players on the board, and we had him as probably number four on the board. And we didn't know if he'd get there. And then they held their breath, hoping that he fell to them. So when they say with the ninth pick, I was buttoning up my suit because I knew my name was going to be called. With the ninth pick, the Philadelphia 76ers select Andre Iguodala from the University of Arizona. And as the moment comes when he finally reaches the NBA, Andre makes sure he shares the experience with the man who's been there all along, his brother. That feeling is so incredible. I didn't think about it like, oh, I made it. I thought like we made it. And we finally here. We were just looking at each other like, yo, we're in the NBA. Andre? Andre. How you doing, Mr. King? Good, how are you? I'm good. It worked out, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad it did. You know, I'm in a good situation. As he arrives in Philadelphia, Andre is savoring his new feeling of independence. I like it. This feel good. Pay your own bills. To do a lot of things on your own. But he's not completely alone, inviting his brother to live with him. They've been tight their whole lives, so why change now? He brought conversation to us that I want my brother with me. Frank said he would come there and spend the, the first year with uh, with Andre and see how things go. The two of them have always been together like that. I was a knucklehead though, you know, he, he was a smart one. I was the one always in trouble. He was always the one doing all his homework, straight A student. If he wasn't doing homework or at school, he was in the gym, you know, that's why we're where we are today. After moving into his new home, now comes the biggest adjustment, his first workouts with the Sixers. Our training camp, you know, I was thinking like, I didn't know what to expect. I just said, hey, just go all out. I mean, if you pass out, you pass out. The first day of training camp, I was like, man, that was tough, man. That was really tough. And it didn't kill me, so I'm thinking like, oh, I can do this then. As the preseason begins, Andre wants to show the 76ers that drafting him was exactly the right choice. Iguodala driving on Barry, stopping in the lane, reverse layup is good. This kid's going to be a good player. He stood out from day one uh, when we was down at Duke training camp, uh, just the way he handled the ball, the way he made decisions. Leaky Iguodala, look at this! Slam wow. for two! He didn't play like a 20-year-old. He never looked out in training camp and watched Andre play and say, boy, 
He doesn't have a sense of what's going on. He always had a really high IQ about what was happening. And at both ends of the court, Andre has proven he can deliver whatever the team needs. Iguodala for three. Yes! Andre Iguodala buries the three. At the end of the preseason, the coach was like, you know, you can earn a starting spot. I was surprised, but it was also like, I felt like I should be there anyway. I think he's going to be a hell of a player. I think he's, he has a chance to be a, a, you know, a starter in this league for many years. He had shined in the preseason and earned a starting job. But for Andre and the rest of the rookies, the real season and the true test was yet to come. Next week, when Spike TV presents NBA Rookies. As the season begins, it's now for real. And the rookies get a taste of what the NBA is all about. What a play by Amaka Okafor as he just tattooed Shaquille O'Neal.